Okay, let's talk about a function and their graphs from section 1.1. All right, so uh, first of all, let's take a look at a rectangular from section 1.1, a rectangular coordinate. And we have four learning objectives. First, a plotting point in the Cartesian system, a Cartesian plane. And second one using the distance formula to find the distance between two points. We learn the distance formula to find the distance for any give any two given points. And we're gonna learn how to use the midpoint formula to find the midpoint of the line segment. Okay. And we can use a um, coordinate plan to model and solve the real life problems. So first one, let's take a look at a Cartesian plane or Cartesian system. Okay, so basically for Cartesian system you have x, x horizontal axis, x axis, y axis, and origin. Okay. So that's a typical Cartesian system. So intercept of x-axis and a y-axis is what we call the uh, the origin. So zero zero. That's this is the origin. So this is typical Cartesian plane, and basically, uh, it's very widely used concept throughout all different fields um, so we represented real numbers by points on a real number line you can represent all the pairs of real numbers by points so we um, we call this plane rectangular coordinate system it's also called Cartesian system now after René Descartes right? it's uh, a French mathematician René Descartes um, so two real number lines intersecting at the right angles on a Cartesian plane. Very typical, again, one more time. X-axis, Y-axis from the right triangle here. And then intercept is what we call the origin. Okay. So let's get to more details of the Cartesian plane. So basically Cartesian plane, um, um, x-axis and y-axis split the entire space into four different quadrants, right? So we're going uh, counterclockwise this way, okay, this way, going counterclockwise. So our first quadrant right here, quadrant number one, and in this quadrant, both x coordinate and y coordinate are positive. Okay, so this concept is very crucial. By the time you get to the trigonometry, it's gonna be helpful. So keep this in mind. And going counterclockwise, we have a quadrant number two, quadrant two. In quadrant two, x coordinate is negative. And then y coordinate is positive. Okay. Now the, we go down to the third quadrant. So both x coordinate and y coordinate are negative. Okay. And move on to the fourth quadrant, quadrant number four, quadrant number three, quadrant number four. And those are the Greek letters. One, two, three. And four. Okay. And in the quadrant number four, x coordinate is positive and y coordinate is negative. Okay. So basically that's a 
um, so this x axis and y axis split entire space into four different quadrants and for each quadrant you know it has different properties and very typical um, cases the x and y coordinate they basically um, behave different ways so the horizontal real number line is called the x-axis. So this is all the concept. And the vertical real number line is usually called the y-axis. And then the intercept of those two axes is what we call the origin. And everything on the x-axis, so the typical feature of x-axis is y-coordinate equal to zero. So you can also write it as x0 y-axis um, the x coordinate zero so zero y okay and then the origin will be the intercept of this two so origin we use zero zero to represent origin and we divide four quadrants we have quadrant one quadrant two quadrant three and quadrant four and each point has all the pair x y they are typically real numbers, and we call these coordinates of the point. And you can call x coordinate and a y coordinate. X coordinate, y coordinate. Okay. So each point in the Cartesian plane has a corresponding x coordinate and a y coordinate. X coordinate representing the direct distance from the y-axis to the point. So for example, we have a given order pair right here, x comma y. So the y coordinates measure from the point to the x-axis. So this distance is what we call the y coordinate. Okay. And then x coordinate is captured by the distance from the mm, point to the y-axis okay so this is x coordinate and these two coordinates just give us uh, all the pair for each given point all right um so notation x comma y denotes both a point in the plane and an open interval on a real number line um so you're just gonna use it flexibly on this now let's take a look at how we plot the point negative one comma two three comma four zero zero three comma zero and then negative two comma negative three so for example um you could just uh, draw the cartesian system a cartesian plane okay this is x-axis and a y-axis so for the first order pair x coordinate is negative y coordinate is positive so basically it's located in the second quadrant so x coordinate you find it from the x-axis negative one y coordinate of two one two so they will have intercept and intercept is the point we're looking for so this is basically at the point negative one comma two okay. with x coordinate negative one y coordinate two as you can see okay and the second point it's the three four so both x coordinate and y coordinate positive so it must be located in the first quadrant so one two three next x coordinate and the y coordinate is four okay all right that would be three and four Four must be here so they have intercept right here and the intercept is what we're looking for three and four okay so this is second order pair three comma four for third order pair zero zero that's basically the origin right here zero zero okay and the fourth order pair three comma zero so when the y coordinate equal to zero that means it's located on the x-axis and x coordinate equal to three so three zero is right here 
Okay, this is three zero. We call this um, X intercept. Okay, so this is typical X intercept. And then last order pair is negative two and negative three, so that should be located on the third quadrant because both x coordinate and y coordinate are negative. So this is negative one, negative two, negative three. So again, we have intercept negative two, negative three, so it should be right here. And you can just draw the, this invisible line to show that that's the intercept so it's negative two negative three okay. all right and we could also let's say you want to plus something like um, another order pair uh, let's say um, uh, zero negative two right as you can see when x coordinate equal to zero it must be located on the y-axis so um, it's on the negative side because y value equal negative two. So right here. So this is the point located on the y axis and zero negative two. We call this y intercept. Okay. So that's pretty much how you uh, plotting all these given all the pairs in a Cartesian system, a Cartesian plane. And the, the beauty of the rectangular uh, coordinate system is that it allow you to see relationship between the x variable and the y variable, and making connection between those two, uh, uh, within those two variables. As you can see, each other pair are given by the x coordinate and also the y coordinate. Yeah, that's how you make connection between those two um, variables. Okay, and um, so this 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 cut introduction of coordinates in the plane actually has a very important implication in a lot of different fields in math, in science, in a lot of different fields. So um, it's virtually used in every scientific and business related fields nowadays. And now let's review some of the concepts from the algebra course. It's called Pythagorean theorem. So very typical Pythagorean theorem. You have a right triangle, and then adjacent side of the right angle A and B is hypotenuse side of the right angle. This is right angle right here. So opposite side of the right angle. From the relationship of a square plus b square equals c square, and this is the essence of the Pythagorean theorem. And we're going to utilize the Pythagorean theorem to prove the distance formula in a little bit. Okay. So this is crucial um, elements. By the time we try to prove the distance formula later. Okay, so. One more time, um, for right triangle with hypotenuse side of the C and then uh, with adjacent side of the right angle A and B Now we have A squared plus B squared equals C squared So this is the most important thing, Pythagorean theorem The only thing is that we're going to be sure this is right angle right here This most important thing um, it must be a right triangle, so we must have a right angle here. Okay. All right. So let's let's you try to utilize the Pythagorean theorem to, to prove the distance formula. So you suppose you want to determine distance d between. So using d represent distance between two points. All right. So I'm going to draw the Cartesian plane. So in the space we have two points. Okay. We we'll label these two points um, x1, y1 and x2, y2. So first order pair, first point is x1, y1. Second point is x2, y2. Now first thing you're gonna connect in those two points. Alright, so we connect those two points. 
to capture the distance. Now let's now let's take a look at this. What if we draw the on the first point we draw the line perpendicular to the to the x-axis. Okay. Right, so basically you could just draw the line perpendicular to the x-axis. The second point we're gonna draw the line perpendicular to the y-axis. By doing this we virtually form the right triangle right here. Okay? So this is what we call the right triangle. Remember we try to use the Pythagorean theorem. So in order to use the Pythagorean theorem we need a right triangle. Alright. And this is the distance we're looking for. Okay. And as you can see this is the opposite side of the triangle right here. So we just need to find out what is two adjacent side of the triangle here. So now let's take the, and let's use a, a coordinate to capture each length in this case. So uh, first of all, and let's try to capture this in the horizontal axis, in the horizontal horizontal one, this one. Okay. As you can see, this is um, x2. This length is x2. Up to this point, x2. And we know this must be, if you look at this, this must be x1. Okay, so the distance of this measurement right here will be difference between x2 and x1. So use x2 minus x1. And since this is rectangle here right? this is typical rectangle down here so we know that if this side is x2 minus x1 then this side must be x2 minus x1 so basically we we utilize the x coordinates right the distance between these two points okay. which is the adjacent side of the right angle now similarly if you look at the the y coordinate okay we try to capture this. So now to draw this, and this is what we call the. Okay, this is y two right here. So this is y two. This is what we call y two. So y two goes here, All right? And uh, okay, and this is y one. Y1 is the longer distance right here. Okay. So Y2 is this, and then Y1 is this. Now again, the difference between this, and we try to capture this side, will be y, Y1 minus Y2. Okay. And since it's, again, this is a rectangle, so if this side is y1 minus y2, then the other side must be y1 minus y2. So this targeted area, targeted space will be y1 minus y2. So right here. So now if you're using Pythagorean theory okay, to set up this, so that should be um, distance square equal to x2 minus x1 which is square and it's basically c square equals a square plus b square and plus y1 minus y2 square okay so distance square so now we just do a little switch here switch y2 we want to keep it consistent since i, I write y x2 minus x1 first here we just switch y1 and y2 and we can rewrite it as y2 minus y1 square now after that, we're just taking the radical square root from both sides of the equation. We're gonna find the difference, I mean the distance, d. And if you're taking the radical, we only keep the positive answer. So distance here must be from here. d must be equal to square root of y x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square okay 
So basically you just verify the distance formula using the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah. And this is just something, you know, um, some extra steps, you know, you can use to uh, help you understand this. And the distance formula are given by this. Distance equal to square root of x2 minus x1 square <clears throat> plus y2 minus y1 parentheses square. So now let's try to use distance formula to calculate the distance for any two given point. So if you try to visualize this, no problem. You can just draw the Cartesian system. First order pair is three, four. So one, two, three. Right here, second order pairs negative two and one. <clears throat> negative two, one, one. Yeah, so here. So again, we connecting those two and find a distance. All right. So now, if you label this three, four, and this is negative two and one. So typically, you can label this x one, y one x2 y2 okay just label each one of this so basically x1 is negative 2 y1 is 1 x2 is 3 and then y y2 is 4 so again using distance formula the square root of y2 minus y1 square and the order does not matter so you can write it in either way you can write x2 minus x1 square first that does not matter Two minus x one square. Now we throw in all the numbers, so we get y two. That's four. Y one is one. And square that, and then x two. That's three. X one is minus negative two. So two negative will turn into positive. So this three square. 3 minus negative 2 becomes 3 plus 2, that's 5, 5 squared. Okay. So we get a radical of 9 plus 25. So that turned out to be radical 34. This is the exact answer, but if you want an approximate answer, you can look at the second slide. You're going to get a 5.53 when you put into the calculator. The distance between those two points is about 5.883 units. Okay. And again, using Pythagorean theorem to check that distance. Okay, we just throw in the distance and then it should be should be good. So we get 34 equal to 34. I just plug in distance equal radical 34. Plug it in, and we verify that using the Pythagorean theorem, then turn out to be the right solution in terms of the distance between those two points. Now let's take a look at the midpoint formula. So midpoint is typically, um, let's say we have a line segment, a two point, and a line segment here. <coughs> And this life segment is x1 by 1. In the middle of this line segment is what we call the midpoint. So right in the middle. So this is what we call the midpoint. And we try to nail down the, the coin, x coordinate and y coordinate of the midpoint using the midpoint formula. Obviously, you can easily prove this, you know, since this is a midpoint. So you're going to form a trapezoid. So this x coordinate here, this is y1. This is y2. So the y coordinate, since this is a midpoint right here, so y coordinate for this will be the, the half of those two. So again, you know, if you want to prove this, you can just form this, form the, um, 
a rectangle here from a rectangle create another you know exact same trapezoid and then form a rectangle and then we will know that you know very easy to prove this and this is the midpoint is half of this and in this case the y coordinate must be um, y1 plus y2 divided by 2 and that's how you prove it using some um, geometry and you'll be able to prove that y coordinate x coordinate just the average of those given to uh, x coordinates of those two given points and the y coordinates of those two given points okay so the pinpoint formula try that yourself if you are interested in proving the midpoint formula uh, we will skip that here <clears throat> so midpoint of the line segment joining by this x1 y1 first given point second point so average the x coordinate we get the x coordinate from the midpoint average the y coordinate we get a y co uh, y coordinate for the midpoint okay very simple procedure and um, let's let's look at the midpoint of the like side we're joining by the point negative five and negative three and negative three again you can draw this really quickly but not necessarily right so uh, if you don't want to draw it no problem so three okay so one two three four five six seven eight nine uh, okay, so x coin, y coin will be 3, 1, 2, 3. So this is first point right here, 9, 3. It's 9, 3. Another point is negative 5, negative 3. Negative 5, negative 1, negative 3. Negative 3 is down here. Okay, so another point is down here. And now if you connect them, you basically get a midpoint. So midpoint must be somewhere here, right? And then we can easily uh, verify the exact location of that. So this is x1, y1, x2, y3, and y2. So the midpoint x coordinate must be x1 plus x2 divided by 2 y1 plus y2 divided by 2 so now again we throw in x coordinate and y coordinate so negative 5 plus 9 by 2 and um, um, <clears throat> negative 3 plus 3 divided by 2 okay negative 5 plus 9 that will be 4 by 2, that will give us 2. And the other one will be 0, so 2, 0. So this should be the midpoints. So the graph is slightly off. But just give the idea, you know. Um, if you draw the graph, you, it's better using the graphing, pa graphing paper if you do it by hand. So in that case, you'll be able to get a fairly accurate estimation from the on the graph <clears throat> but yeah two two comma zero that's gonna be the midpoint of those two points yep and if you draw the proper graph you know you get this two zero <clears throat> as the midpoint yeah. now let's take a look at the application of the distance formula so um, Let's say a football quarterback throws a pass from a 28 yard line, 40 yard from the sideline. So these two could formulate as an x and a y coordinate. So 40 and a 28, that's, that's x, that's x, y coordinate for the location of this quarterback. And a y receiver catches the pass on a 5 yard line. 20 yards on the same sideline, so the, so the quarterback 
quarterback is right here. And receiver is right here. So we just basically um, use X, Y coordinate to to give the to pinpoint the, the exact location of those two um, players. So basically, this quarterback throw the throw the ball all the way to the receiver and try to find out that uh, how long is the pass. Right? Basically, you, you just from find out the distance here distance of those two person with a ball of throne and let's do it so we basically just utilize the distance formula to get this so first, uh, similarly speaking you can just do x1 y1 or you can always do that x2 y2 yeah. so the distance between those two players should be y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 square and here let me just show you something really quickly um, you can just switch the coordinate it doesn't matter right um, so here we can write y1 minus y2 square plus x1 minus x2 square we'll give you the same result uh, I'm gonna show you why this works right let's say you have a 5 minus 2 square Okay, now if you switch 5 and 2 and 5, now you get 2 minus 5 squared. The result of those two must be the same. So that's the reason we can switch these two numbers to simplify the calculation. As you can see, 5 minus 2 squared is 3 squared. That turned out to be 9. 2 minus 5, that's negative 3 squared. After squared it, and it also becomes nine. You see same result. So in this case, for the perfect square, you can switch those two numbers or those two values within the parentheses. You still get the same result. Here, um, the reason why I do that because it's, it's simpler because we don't have to deal with the negative numbers. So y1 is 28 because I noticed that. Y1 and X1 is bigger than X1 and Y2. Y1 minus Y2, 20 minus 5 square plus X1 is 40, X1 is 20 square. Okay, so we have end up with 23 square plus 20 square. And let's just get the exact number really quickly. 3 square plus 20 square that turned out to be right called 929 okay and if you just get a rough estimate radical square root of 929 turn out to be 30.479 and that's approximately equal to, uh, if you run into the whole number, it should be about 30 yards, right? 30 yards. Okay. So the distance between, the distance of the pass will be 30 yards long, approximately. And we just basically utilize the, uh, the distance formula to solve a real, real world. Um, problem so uh, we basically using cognate geometry to solve the real life problems and it's uh, pretty creative to come up with a cognate in this particular um, for the football you know scenario come up with a coordinate in a Cartesian plane. That is something um, you have to think of because it's not that obvious. And that, that provides a lot of convenience in terms of solving the problem.